worst tyrants of world history and his regime. How does it feel to spend so much time with a man who somehow symbolizes the evil of mankind? Well, uh, first of all, hello ladies and gentlemen, it's very nice to be here. It uh, feels like a long time. And, um, it, uh, of course, not all that time was spent on studying Hitler directly. The work on the biography took about 10 years, but I'd already been working on the Third Reich before that for a long period of time. So I think that um, the uh, key thing is that um, this, it, it, of course, is, is all, in a way, it's awful to spend so much time studying such a dire period of history, and yet, this is a period of history which has shaped the 20th century and shaped um, our lives in many, so many ways. And to that extent, it has an importance which most periods of history don't. Do. So to that extent, it compensates a little bit for the time spent in such a grim, such a grim and uh, uh, and horrendous period of history. Many of you are sometimes criticised of, of about, about identifying themselves too much with their subset. I don't think that you have that kind of problem here, but on the other hand, there's a, some, some, some kind, you have to find a balance how much you understand from inside Hitler's mind in order to explain his, uh, his, his uh, career. How could you remain cool in all this process? Uh, I think the, the problem is sometimes overrated, the difficulty of, um, of doing this, the difficulty of trying to write about a subject um, a subject who is in the um, negative. Uh, in certain ways, the problems of writing a biography are perhaps more difficult if you're writing about a subject uh, to whom you feel sympathetic. So it's part of the historian's job, not just in dealing with figures from the 20th century, but from other periods as well. Sound mentality is sometimes strange to us. And the question is really one of trying to not to sympathize, of course, in the, in the case of Hitler, it's very easy not to sympathize. It's not a question of sympathy or even empathy, but it's a matter of explanation and understanding. So, in this case, um, Hitler's pathological feelings about, about a pathological hatred of Jews is in terms of rationality, of course, impossible to understand for any. But in terms of its impact, what that meant, uh, and how that affected his, um, his own political career and his own impact on geopolitics, then that is possible to understand. And so I think the problem is sometimes overrated. And if I were dealing with other figures of the 20th century, say Stalin, Mussolini, Mao Zedong, uh, Franco, the problem would be no different. As I said, I think the real um, difficulty will arise with the temptations if we come to sympathize with a person's history rather than to have the uh, critical this from that person and has been the main bad guy, so to say, of the 20th century for obvious reasons, and we have received quite a few Stalin biographies after the Cold War for new resource material from Soviet Union and so on. But there is not that great literature on Hitler in Finnish, and actually the, the Alan Fuller classic study from the 50s is, is still rather valid in, in this sense. How would you say that picture of Hitler or the study of Hitler have has evolved from 50s to, to your book. Yeah, if, we, if we look at Alan Bullock's biography, um, I think of the time that it was written in 1952, that was a, a masterly piece of work. And yet, of course, in the nature of things, many um, sources, many pieces of evidence come out since Bullock wrote, which were obviously not available to him. Single out one for the minute, the diaries of the propaganda minister yourself. And so what with this, we have, an, we have insights into Hitler which were simply not a book writing. Now, on top of that, if you look at the, um, the sort of interpretation that Bullock was producing there, it was of a very personalized study of Hitler, but Hitler was seen as a type of modern example of classical terror. An individual without ideas, really, just ideas which he used for how to manipulate, for um, ideas he used in order to manipulate his role into power and they exercise that power. Amongst those ideas which Alan Bullock did not place great emphasis on was Hitler's anti Semitism. And so, one of the key areas of the Nazi period 
the centrality of anti-Semitism or Hitler's hatred of the Jews and how that then um, turned itself into policies of outright genocide plays a, a very small role in Bullock's biography which centers on foreign policy and upon the war. In my case, this anti-Semitic set of ideas of Hitler are absolutely crucial to the entire world and placed on the set of grounds. So the war itself is seen in many ways as inextricably mixed with the idea of removal of Jews. And so both in terms of the sources available and in terms of the interpretation, there's a big difference between Bullock's early biography and the one we're talking about now. Germany, Germany created the circumstances with, with, within which this extraordinary individual could ever get remotely close to power. Without those conditions in Germany between the wars, and particularly the, the aftermath, the impact of the First World War, without those conditions, Hitler would never have been heard of in history. But of course then we have to bring into bear the interrelationship of the personality and the society. So this book, this biography, is actually not just about Hitler's personality, of course, not even primarily personality, but about the way in which that personality, in these, ex in these unique circumstances, is able to have a colossal impact upon Germany and then increasingly upon Europe until the whole of Europe is brought into total destruction by Hitler's at the end of the war. I, I think there's no country, actually, which has um, spent so much time and energy in exploring and laying bare their own past as Germany. When you look around, you think that uh, Italy, Spain, Austria, Japan, and so on, none of these come to the same as Germany has done in this regard. Of course, the question of the sense of collective responsibility for what took place in the name of their country is still there in Germany today, and right so. The question of was a different in the sense that, of course, most of the people alive in Germany today were alive then. They can't be guilty for something that they didn't do. But the sense of national responsibility is one well, which is still there. And it's correct that it is. It's just Hitler and a group of Nazis. There was widespread complicity at every area of that society. And that is something which the Germans, as I've said, all other country have come to recognize. Certainly, Hitler could be said to have um, had um, a sort of personality disorder. Uh, the question is precisely where that came from, and there there are many theories and very little proof, uh, because it was never was never on a psychiatrist's couch, and therefore there is uh, much room for speculation and little room for childhood. His family background was very complicated and very disturbed. He had a, a, a very um, an authoritarian father who certainly mistreated him and his mother. So he had an overbearingly um, loving mother, um, and he gets the, the picture of her right down to the end, possibly yielding a, re a real sense of affection for her in a normal sense. This, uh, if we actually look back at the what little we know of this child, and from this background, if we didn't know what was, we might feel sympathetic towards this child. But then it created a, a disturbed uh, adolescent and disturbed adults, certainly correct. And, one thing which comes out psychologically with Hitler is the very strong uh, narcissistic complex. This is somebody who thought he was the centre of the world, thought he would be a great artist. Um, later on, the adulation which came his way was um, just enhanced these feelings of the other person that mattered. And right at the end, of course, he was saying the German people haven't deserved, they haven't um, uh, really measured up to what I wanted of them, they haven't deserved me and they deserve now their war to disappear from, from the universe. So in this way too, Hitler's personality went right through in affecting Germany to the end and the, the uh, sense that at the end all that mattered was his own, um, his own uh, reputation history, that he would never have capitulated in the way that the Germans capitulated in them. And in this sense too, therefore, Hitler's uh, own personal uh, psychology played its part in the turning the fate of Germany right to the very end.